audience. Good morning. Welcome to Northdale Lutheran Church. If you're visiting with us for the first time, I hope you picked up a bulletin uh, as you walk in. For those uh, watching the service online, uh, you'll find service materials by the link that is there at our website and use those to follow along our service today. Uh, the theme for our worship today is God wants us to repent and live. It's kind of good to know that God wants us to live, don't you think? Yeah, and that life comes about as we turn to Him and repent. Repent is a word that sometimes sets people back on their heels. You know, if I were to say to you, repent, you might get really defensive all of a sudden unless you stop to think about what that means. Repent. Turn to Jesus and live. That's all in that one word, repent. Change your mind, the way you think, the way you walk, the direction your life is taking you, or that you're chosen to take, calls for a turnaround. To turn around from that which we are inclined toward doing from the moment of conception, based upon the words of Scripture, then every inclination of our hearts is evil from childhood. Repent, God says, and live. We're going to follow the order of worship as it's printed for you in the service folder, and we begin with the singing of the opening hymn, Lord, to you I make confession.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. And dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we have come into the presence of God, who created us to love and serve Him as His dear children. But we have disobeyed Him and deserve only His wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to Him and plead for His mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. I have good news. God our Heavenly Father has forgiven all our sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, He has removed our guilt forever. We are His own dear children. May God give to you and me the strength to live according to His will. Amen. In the peace and joy of that gift of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord.
declares the Sovereign Lord. Repent and live. This is God's Word. We continue with Psalm 25. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of God. Indeed, hallelujah, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, hallelujah. We sing the response.
please stand for the reading of the gospel lesson and note that this will serve as the text for the sermon message today. We turn our attention to the 21st chapter of Matthew, reading verses 28 through 32. What do you think? Jesus asked. There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered. But afterwards he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the other son and said the same thing. He answered, I will, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two sons did what the father wanted? The first, they replied. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For sin came to you, some, <clears throat> for John came to you to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus. Please be seated. We continue with the next hymn. came to you to show you the 
way of righteousness and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. Jesus always used short stories, we know them as parables, in teaching lessons to people. And before us this morning, we have a little treasure in these words in the Gospel of Matthew. Now, I want you to imagine yourselves being there and hearing Jesus speak these words. For actually, you are there. Jesus today speaks these words to us and asks the question, what do you think? Or look in the mirror every once in a while and say to yourself, Steve, what do you think? Well, don't use Steve's name. Use your name. What do you think? What do you think about the wondrous way in which God has dealt with all these horrible people in the world? What do you think? He dealt with me that way, too. What do you think? And what do you think about this? Which one of the Father's children are you when you place yourself into this parable as Jesus intends you to do? Which one? You've got two choices. Are you the one with empty words that mean nothing, even though they sound sweet at first? Are you, or are you the one with repentant actions? Well, I pray it's the latter. It had to be stunning to the people that confronted Jesus. We see them all the times in the gospel lesson. They come, we talked about this in Bible class today. You should have been there and you enjoyed it. People that come and they're always looking for some little way in which they can, they can stick it to Jesus. Find some little way that we can bring up charges against him. We can challenge his authority. We can destroy his ministry. We can regain the support of the people for us. But why not? We deserve that. Jesus gives us these two characters in the parable. And the one is maybe a little shocking unless you've raised a teenager. Son, go and work in the vineyard. No, I will not. Maybe in your case it was, would you take out the trash? No. Will you clean your room? No. Will you do your homework? No. But then we hear that he changed his mind and did what his father had asked of him. But then there's the one with the empty words. And he's the one that's most distressing of all. He's I wonder that term we hear in the news all the time, fake news. You know? Sure, Dad, I'll do it. But he doesn't. Now he had no intention of doing that. Say, yes, Dad, sure I will. Okay, he's not looking. I'm going. I'll shut the door to the bedroom. They won't know that the room isn't clean yet. I'll push the trash down a little further in that can and you won't know what has to do. I'll ruffle some papers in my textbook and they'll conclude that the homework was completed already. See, Mom? All done. Until Miss Hardman calls the next day. Or Mr. Mattis, Mr. Herring, or any of the teachers at the school to inform the parents that the homework was not completed as promised. Empty words. What happens when we come to God's house on a Sunday morning? Sometimes maybe we're guilty of having empty words. We, I mean, we know the confession we spoke this morning by heart. And even if we read it off the printed page before us in the bulletin, were you thinking about what you were saying there? Are you truly grieving over your sin, your failure to do the things that God desires of you? Do you truly mean it when you say, I, 
I'm going to amend my life, but I will change. I will do what you've asked of me. Do you? Or are your words empty and hollow? A simple rote recitation of something you've heard again and again and again. Maybe like the saying of that Lord's Prayer, even before you fall asleep, wonderful thing to do. Or were you just getting the words out of your mouth? Or did it really pour forward from a heart of faith in obedience to God's command? This is how you are to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Just empty words don't mean much. You know, we, we, we human beings encounter empty words all the time, you know. Uh, people say things to us and we stand back and we wonder, oh, I wonder if that's really true. I wonder if she really will. I wonder if my son did. And of course then we are obligated to check. And sometimes we find out that their words truly were empty. No sincerity at all. Just telling us what we wanted to hear, but not what we needed to see. The fruit of repentance. That's what God wants from us. He wants us to be a people who turn around. You know, repentance is not a complicated thing. You ever do a pirouette at the 360? This is going halfway, 180 degrees. Yeah. Turn from the way you're thinking, the way you're walking, the, the way you've chosen for your path in life. Turn back to God. Not with fear in your heart, but turn to Him for forgiveness. God wants you to lay those sins before Him. He wants to bear your heart before Him. He wants to hear all that is wrong with you. So he can assure you again, as he did this morning, even if those words out of your mouth were a rote recitation of the confession, he wants to tell you, I forgive you. I still love you. I sent my son to redeem you. I shed his blood in your place. I laid all your sins on I crushed him. I pierced his flesh for you. So that by his wounds, you might be healed. So we pray we don't come to God with empty words. And even when that rebellious, sinful flesh of ours gets a little bit of the upper hand, as it often does, and we say, no way, we know from this little parable, that God looks to see that turnaround, that 180 degree turn back to Him. When we recognize honestly what we are and what we've done and what we fail to do, and know that there's only one solution for what we are. It's not found anywhere else. What's that beautiful hymn that we find in our supplement? In Christ alone. There's where we find our help. There's where we find our healing. There's where we find forgiveness. It's, there's no bottom, there's no end to that forgiveness. It's just poured out on us graciously. It's not a bad idea, by the way. Every once in a while, I'll open up the front of that hymnal and look at those questions in preparation for Holy Communion. So we ask ourselves, do, 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 I, do I really believe that I have sinned against God? Do I really believe that, that in this sacrament I truly receive Jesus' body and blood as the assurance of the forgiveness of my sins? Do, do I really intend to amend my sinful way, to turn from the way I think, the way I walk, the way I talk? Do I really mean that? Do I really trust in God to forgive a rebellious child like me? God does, you know. That uh, son that finally turned around and did his father's will. Jesus asked those enemies of his, which son do you think did what his father wanted? <laughs> they all had the answer. <laughs> the one who turned around and did what his father asked him to do. 
The problem was, even though Jesus' story was simple to understand in the picture that he displayed there, these two sons, they didn't quite get it or they didn't want to get its application to them personally. They didn't want to be either one of the sons, I guess. First of all, they didn't want to be the one that rebelled against God, but not us. No, no. Not even if he turned around, because that would admit that I was wrong in the first place. Huh. They sort of liked the way the other one started out. Yes, Father, I will. But they didn't want to be him either, because he didn't do what his father commanded. So obviously Jesus' parable had nothing to do with them, right? No, they did their homework. They took out the trash. They, they did all those things they were supposed to do. They didn't say the words that they shouldn't speak. No, they were, they were righteous. Why are we even listening to this man tell stories? We don't need a savior. Our righteousness has already taken care of our sin. Well, we didn't have any sins. At least none we could take care of. A few more good works. And if we're a little short on those, or if there's some that are too difficult for us to obey at those rules of God, then let's come up with a few more. You know, they came up with over 600. You know, so you can get more merit badges, I guess. And we'll do this one, we'll do that. Oh, man, we're, oh, we're right up there with you. I'll tell you, God's going to be happy when he gets us in, in his heaven. He's probably longing for our arrival because we're such good people. I had a young man come to my little mission in Canada one time. We had a storefront in a mall. He wanted to know if this was truly a Lutheran church. And I said, well, we hope it will be at the start. We have just a Christian information center here. He said, well, I could never, I could never, ever say again that confession in that hymnal. I am a poor, miserable. I am not, he said. He said, well, that's really quite interesting. You were raised Lutheran, were you? He said, oh, yeah. Yeah, I was. But I've been enlightened. I'm no longer a sinner. And I said, and you base that on what? He said, the book of Romans. I thought to myself, have you read it? <laughs> the wages of sin is death. The gift of God is eternal life. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. He just didn't get it. Because, you see, he had, he had said, yes, Lord. And he didn't turn away, he claimed. I said, well, what about your inheritance? He said, my parents are still living. I said, I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about that sin that stained your very existence from the moment you were conceived in your mother's womb. What about that inheritance? He said, well, God doesn't know that against me. I was just an innocent kid. Not even born yet. David didn't think so. You know him? He said, surely I was a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. God looked down from heaven. Don't you know this young man? God looked down from heaven. He looked around and he looked at all the people in the world. And he couldn't find one who was good. Not even you, young man. None. Did it ever occur to you that that's why he had to send Jesus into the world? So that any of us might enter God's kingdom? God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. God's son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. No one comes to the Father except through the Son whom God sent. Because he loves us. Obedient or disobedient children, though we may be, depending on the day or the hour. Hmm. So, which of the Father's children are you? Are you 
the one with empty words or the one with repentant actions. John the Baptist, Jesus makes reference to him in the text, pointed the people to, to the way to heaven. Remember those words? He told the people that gathered the drum, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. These people, these people that were accosting Jesus with their words, they didn't get it. They didn't see themselves as people in need of what the Lamb of God provided. But Jesus shamed them by pointing to the tax collectors and the prostitutes. He said, they're entering the kingdom of God ahead of you because they believe what John preached. When we hear the gospel lesson, we need to know that did we not hear it, we would have no hope. There is no hope apart from Jesus. There is no other way into heaven except through Jesus. There is no other means by which we might be saved except by the grace of God revealed to us in His Son, Jesus. So which one of the children are you of the Father? I pray that you'll recognize that you're both of them. That's why we come into God's house and confess our sins. We recognize that there are times when we can rejoice that by the power of God's grace moving us, that compelling love revealed in Jesus, that oftentimes we do the things that God commands. But inevitably, we all recognize that when we fail, there's only one place for us to go. Back to Jesus. Back to the cross. There to lay our sins, there to lay our frailties, our weaknesses, our, our unspent righteousness. Our, yeah, maybe, maybe you'll get that trash taken out today, you think? Maybe your homework really will get done on time. Maybe you will get that long. Maybe you. You will be sure to hold those devotions with your children. Maybe you will pray with them. Maybe you will hear the Savior's command and say, yes, Father, I will. We need it. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God which transcends all human understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds through faith in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This time we make confession of our faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, 